microphone turned off. What a waste of a live stream. So um, I will go back and uh, remove those. Uh, let me go back and have a look. Um, <laughs> so I just, yes, I can see. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Magpie. I didn't, I haven't been looking at the the Twitter stream, and uh, uh, P in Paris. I can't hear you, but uh, I'm intrigued trying to sort it. No, it's not your problem. It was absolutely my problem. Hopefully, you guys can tell me. If someone can send me a message and let me know if you can hear me, that'd be fantastic. Because um, uh, 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 because you know, I I made a mistake. So hopefully, hopefully, you guys can hear me now. Right, let's start again, shall we? Uh, so we're going to start off by talking about the two bad guys, the villains of this piece. First villain we have here is Wilfred who uh, is now St. Wilfred. And the second guy is this guy here, which is um, Kedwala. He was a king of Wessex who was uh, sent into exile as, as a child, but he wants to come back, reclaim his throne, and bring in more of the, um, the kingdoms under his own, you know, it was basically a selfish power grab. But the way to do that, he went to Wilfred and he said, look, tell you what, I'll go and claim these kingdoms under the uh, the, the name of uh, Christ. This guy here. And uh, if you'll support me, Wilfred. So Wilfred says, yes, of course. But of course, to do that, you have to give me lands. And uh, Wilfred agreed, and he agreed to give a quarter of the Isle of Wight to the church um, as a thank you. He, um, oh, we've got some messages coming in. Great, uh, we've got audio out there. I'm glad you guys can hear. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete the uh, the message, the the original um, uh, live stream because you know that was obviously um, a load of old garbage because it didn't work we delete that one and we're here we go so people don't get confused right um and i'm going to delete that one there and get rid of that there we go right fantastic okay so we're sorted right um pin that and so he said to to wilfred okay i agree uh, let's get on and, and do this thing. So these are uh, these two guys, Wilfred, Kedwala, they're our uh, they're our main bad guys. And let's go and talk about our hero. So our hero here is um, King Arwald, the last pagan king of the Britons. Uh, and the last king of the Isle of Wight. Now, the Isle of Wight has been staunchly independent for since time immemorial, um, and we still are today. We 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 have our own way of doing things. Some drive me up the wall. You know, we're kind of stuck in the past and certain things. But some things, you know, they they are just our, our way of doing things. We have our own dialect, uh, fading fast, unfortunately. And I'm trying to to make sure people remember you know there's still still little bits that crop up now and then um we have our own stories and we have our own little world our own little country we like to think of it that way and um so king old our, our last king and we, we don't really know when he he came into the throne but we know it was after 661 and we know that because the Venerable Bede tells us that um, uh, in 656, um, the, uh, some priests went to the Isle of Wight to preach Christianity and bring them to, to Jesus Christ, uh, which didn't go so well. And then in 661, um, uh, we had uh, another attempt where one uh, the king of the south saxons 
um, Ethelwald uh, sent uh, his emissary there and um, uh, converted converted uh, the island. But as soon as they left, um, uh, the the island went back to its old ways and appointed its own ruler. I like to think it was pretty much straight away as soon as uh, as soon as you know the the interlopers left um they they held their own um uh, uh their own mot uh, uh and uh, assigned their own king and I actually think it was our world um and we know he was who he, he was of a royal family and uh and we know that because his sister went on to we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute um so the the royal line was there so what do we know well let's bring up let's bring up our map so we know that um our man uh uh started to um um said kedwala uh basically across the country and um over here into Kent. So he's marching along here and um you know taking taking the kingdoms in the name of uh the the mother church. Apparently um took Kent and brought it back to the church. This being the Celtic Church, not not the Roman Church. Um and to be fair, there there was not a lot different between um, what what the people would have seen from a from a religious standpoint in the Celtic Church. As there was with um, the um, uh, with the Roman Church. Anyway, they and then marched on. Now he he agreed, obviously, to to give lands to the church. Uh, now, Kewala technically wasn't a Christian at this point. Uh, please excuse my nose. Um, I've got terrible hay fever, which is this time of year. Um, so my throat's a little bit dry and my nose is a little bit... Um, so he was still technically pagan, in inverted commas, but um, was marching under the, the Christian banner. Now, I believe that days before... Well, probably even weeks before, um, Arwood must have known that this was happening. Word had got down to him, so he would have been sending out emissaries to any followers of the old religion that he could he could any enclaves in in the country that would come and support him and bring in uh, any mercenaries he could afford. Uh, would have and he would have been amassing every man he could on the island and and bring them into his army to 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 fight for their country to fight for their um their faith i mean to to the to the witwara to the to the wit the people of the witwara this was a this was a holy war uh to um Kedwalo, this was a, a a flagrant land grab i mean he, he did not care about his faith he didn't care about christianity he didn't care about anything he just wanted the land but uh to the to the people of white i believe this was seen as a holy war not not only that but 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 for their homes so i believe it's not actually stated in 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 any of the writings where they came but most likely um it would have come to portsmouth and uh, they would have been here, I would have thought, from maybe the 20th, maybe the 21st, getting their boats ready, getting their men together, and amassing here. On the island, days before, so let's um, zoom in a little bit. Zoom into the island here. Carisbrook or Witwarisberg, as it was known, 
um, they would have been uh, they would have been setting up their defenses there, and um, also there would be I would have thought um, all along the island, all along from here to Witwarsburg, uh, beacons, beacons to let them know what was going on. But I expect that um, uh, Arwood must have brought his his men here to ride and be setting up all along here. I expect this is this is the point that they're going to be engaging in battle. Um, since this is the, the 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 closest point when coming from Portsmouth here. I expect they would have been there for days. Um, now, on, on, I like to think that they had people over here on this side of the island uh, getting the blue from the the coloured the coloured sands and making them in, grinding them down into pastes and taking the white from the chalks, painting their face white with blue stark colours, war paints. I expect they're all... I, 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 when I close my eyes, that's what I see, is this vision of them all painted. These men, ready to defend... Uh, ready to defend their, their, their country. Now, there are two brothers. Their names lost to time. The, the two brothers of of uh, Arwald. And this is where we get St. Arwald's Day. I mean, the, 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 the saint, the canonization is to, of the, the sons or the, called the first fruits. Called that because they were the first fruits of the slaughter. The slaughter of the men of the Isle of Wight. The slaughter of the Witwara. The first fruits. Um... Which always gets a lump in my throat, you know, it's a, a tragic, tragic name. But I believe probably on the 20th, maybe the 21st, um, Arwood summons his brothers. And uh, they, they, they go to Mottiston. Uh, where the, the, the great... Um, Standing Stone is one of the the, the great um, uh, one of the uh, holy places of the island. Uh, the Mott Stone or Mottston called that because it's a Mott Stone, and that's where they would hold um, magical council, as well as um, I believe probably chose the next kings. Um, and, um, and also courts and, and, and all sorts there, not all because, um, of this, this, uh, wonderful, uh, standing stone. Well, there's, there's two stones there, but you know, it's, 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 um, we're not, we're not, we're not here to talk about Mottiston. I believe he took the, he, his, his brothers there and explained what was going on and, had with him his, his two best men, three best men, and said, you must take these boys because they need to be taken away and secured because they hold the throne in their hands. They are the... They will succeed me because he must have known that um, the writing was on the wall. He must have known the size of the, the army that was coming. So they went from Carisbrook... Newport and I expect during the dead of night out into the Solent to a place called Stone just outside of um, outside of uh, Southampton uh, where they were put into uh, care by you know a friendly um, uh, a a uh, a friend 
of the royal family, hidden away. Secured, I'm, I'm sure Arwood must have felt, you know, he, he'd done the best he could to secure the, um, the, the legacy and, and, and the royal family. Come the 22nd. Now, the records say that the 22nd was the battle, the great battle, the battle between our hero and uh, Kedwala. And it must have been a vicious fight. And I believe that the wit, the men of wit, the Whitwara, they, they fought with everything they had. And from all accounts, Kadwala uh, received uh, many, many injuries from the battle, attributed to Arwald himself. Uh, they, these were these injuries he never were never healed, and he never recovered from them really. But. Uh, Arwood was killed and slain. And Kedwala then went on a genocide, it's almost, and slaughtered every family, it's said. Now, whether that is means every family on the island or, or the ruling houses, the, the noblemen, more likely the, no, the noblemen, um and um basically wiped them out and put his own men in place um and that no, and it, it is said it's said that at that point at the point when when Arwald is slain the whole country's heart broke and the breaking of that collective heart broke the Witwara in two. And when I say broken in two, I mean the island that, that you see here split. And you end up with the Isle of Wight that lives in our world. And the Witwara broke away. And is now in the other place, the place beyond the veil. And I like to think that our king, his brothers and so forth, are still there. And that magical place that still comes back when the swaling blows in off the sea and the veil becomes thin. They exist together, but apart. But the story continues. And we now talk about the two brothers, the, the, f the first fruits. So named because they were the first fruits of the slaughter. Um, the, a priest... Um, well, the, the, the children were betrayed and, um, Kawala f found out about him and rushed, uh, rushed over and so they must be killed. They, 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 the, the children must be slain for their crimes, but a priest, Cinebert, I think his name is pronounced, or Cinebert, uh, talk to them and, and explain the mysteries of the Christian faith and, con and convince them to convert to Christianity. And uh, on their deathbeds, you know, the, the, and uh, they converted and they were then slain by Kedwala or one of his his men. And this is where the story goes a little bit. You know, it has been... There's two versions of it. So according to the official 
uh, Vatican Records are world. Saint Saints are world. So the two martyred on the 22nd of April. Uh, two brothers. Now, according to the Vatican Records, they were the sons of Arwald, um, the princes of the Isle of Wight. And they were put to de death by the soldiers of King Sedwala, who was then a pagan and was so angered by their, their uh, baptism that he martyred them. Irony being that uh, Sedwala was... was was doing this in the name of Christianity and he, he was he was a Christian in everything but name well except for and his actions were not Christian at all um, uh, so when, once he had gone and slaughtered the children once the children had been slaughtered as I said he went back and ordered the slaughtering of of the great houses of the the Witwara and I believe that those houses still exist, but just in the other place. But not. this is not the end of the story. Um, the house, the royal house of the Wit, the Witwara, um, goes on. And in a way, it still goes on today. So Arwald's sister... Married the king of Kent at the time, King Egbert. Uh, we don't know what uh, our old sister's name. Her name is lost to time. But uh, she had their first son, which she named is believed. What the islanders believe, she named. Well, he was actually named Whitred, W I, H T, R E D. Of Kent. And we believe that she named him Whitred after the, the, the Witwara, after the after the men of white. Um she were so who he was uh the father of Ethelbert the second of Kent, making her his grandmother. Ethelbert the second was the father of Egbert of, Wes of Wessex, which makes our sister great grandmother, and in turn, Egbert of Wessex is the father of Alfred the Great, making our sister great great grandmother to Alfred the Great, meaning that the royal line of the Witwara can be shown to come straight through to the royal family. So in our eyes, the North Island or the whole of the British Isles of, of the, the Kingdom of Britain and Northern Ireland still belong to the Isle of Wight. That's what we believe. Well, I believe. I'd like to think we all believe that. So thank you so much for, for joining me. And I'm sorry about our little hiccups. Um, I haven't checked to see if we've got any messages coming through. Let's have a quick look. Um, just mostly people telling me how to pr pronounce. <laughs> um, uh, so if I, I hope everyone um, enjoyed this little tribute to to our lost king. I could go into much more depth. I mean, this is a very high level sort of thing um and i'll leave the link to um to my uh, article i wrote here about the pagan kings or the the uh i guess the um the the, the first kings of the witwara and the, to the to the very last um for for everyone to read i just noticed there's actually a typo there i need to fix that um Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to go and rest my throat because it's, uh, you know, at the end of its tether. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, I'm sorry for the little hiccup earlier. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know any feedback you want to send. Uh, take care and I'll talk soon.